Hi, everyone. I'm Fran Dury. Thank you so much for joining us. So Logan Gulliff has received international fame when he became an award-winning junior chef. Now, what I love about this young man is despite all this, he continues to be grounded and grateful. And we here at Be The Voice are so excited that he's going to be teaming up with us for our fall program. And he joins us now live from his home in Memphis. Hi, how are you? Hello. I'm doing great. So first, I want to start by saying congratulations on your graduation. You just had oh, your thank you so much. distancing. Yeah, it's been a lot of work. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm so proud of you. So I have to tell our viewers that I've actually known Logan since he was a baby. Um, when I was a, a news anchor and reporter in Memphis at ABC 24 UPN 30, I used to come over to Logan's house. So I recognize that stone behind you at your house. And I would interview his parents, Tom and Kim, who were very active in the community and were just always like camera ready and available to me when I needed um, someone to interview for stories. And so I have known you since you were a baby and then I would see you running around as a toddler. And then all of a sudden one day I'm watching Master Chef Junior and you were just amazing. Only 11 years old. Can we talk about that? What were you feeling through this whole process? At 11, I don't even know if I could have like boiled an egg. Yeah, you know, back when I was 11, there, there was a big, there was a big hurdle for me. You know, I was, I was a small guy, and and when you're 11, you, you have a lot of issues with like being small and and not having the strength. So sometimes when I was cooking, I had to think of like cheesy ways to do things so that I wouldn't like, you wouldn't tell that I was like small guy and I was only 11. So I would like put my finger on top of the knife and I'd make sure to use ingredients I could take down easily and effectively. Um, because I was like kind of a, a, little, a little kid. So a lot of my looking back, some of my dishes really show that like I used that because it wasn't very scary or it wasn't very dangerous because um, being small, you, you have a different view of the kitchen and you have a different view when you've been cooking a long time. So you think about like your dishes and you think about what ingredients you can use really well and what ingredients you can use when you're, when you're a kid like wow, well. and so that really inspired like some of my dishes. Like I made like a carrot glaze one time. I knew I could take down the carrots real easy, um, but I never really encountered like I never did anything with pumpkin or like a really <laughs> yeah. big melon because that would require you to take down a whole melon. And when that melon is like the size of, like your head, right, <laughs> or, like bigger than your head, that's when you're really dealing with some issues because you gotta get the knife and you gotta cut it and then you gotta get good slices out of it. So I tried to avoid ingredients that I knew were too big for me to handle, which is something that I really love now that I'm I'm a teenager and I'm 17 that I can really take down anything. Like I can take down a big thing of meat, I can take down melons, I can do well basically whatever I want. I'm strong enough now that you know those limitations that I felt back then weren't there. And I think it's something to realize like when you're cutting something, just how much being like taller and being like on top of whatever you're cutting really matters. So which this, Logan, which makes that win so remarkable. Like, how did you feel when they called your name and said you were the Master Chef Junior winner for that year? Well, it was just incredible because I remember standing up there and I, and I got my family around and, and like the, the big reveal is gonna happen. And I, and I felt pretty confident. I was like, you know, they did they gave a pretty good review of my first dish. You're pretty, pretty okay. Okay, my, my, my second dish was good. They didn't like my sauce, but that's all right. The fish was cooked well. The baby vegetables were a good choice. Um, I knew I should have went with that other sauce that I was thinking about. And then my dessert, my dessert was pretty good too. So I was feeling like, you know, this this is a pretty good, obviously like 50-50, pretty good. And then when they were like, and the winner is Logan. And I was like, oh my gosh, wow. And then the confetti's going in and, and you're just in the moment, like living it. And it's just something that you, you can't really describe that feeling of like, like winning the Super Bowl or, or just, you know, like you, you won it, you got the trophy, you, you're the champion, you're the last chef standing, you're, you, you did it. And um, in that kind of competition where there's so many challenges and you go through so many different 
different times when you think, oh man, this is the dish that's going to send me home. Like this is the one that's just not good enough. This, this is what's going to send me home. I'm, I'm going to get axed on this one. Or you think like, man, I'm feeling pretty good about this one. Or like, you know, this challenge, like I really beat myself over up over because I knew, I know I should have done something differently. And, and, you know, I really got caught up in it because, you know, you realize like after the fact, what you should have done. Your hindsight's always twenty twenty. Right. So is- since then, you have just like, you're everywhere. I mean, I see you all over, you know, in print. You've won a ton of awards. You went to the White House and met with President Obama and, and Michelle. Um, I've seen you all cooking on the Today Show. Just all these things. Like, what do you feel like makes you push yourself to that, to that level? I think that, you know, as as a motivated person and as somebody who, who chases the best, you always have to be thinking about like, what's the next really cool thing I can do? What's the thing that's going to top the last thing I can do? And like, what's what's the next thing? So when you ask yourself that question of like, how, how do I become more than this one achievement? Like, how do I, how do I continue myself? And how do, how do I do the next thing? So you're always thinking about, well, what's the next thing? What's the next thing? What's the next cool thing I'm going to do? And whether it be like, um, doing a TED talk or traveling to India or winning a book award in China, no matter what it is, as long as you're continuing and you're just like pumping it out, you know, you're going to get there. And then you're going to be like, wow, I did it. I'm here. This is amazing. This is so cool. And then you'll think like, wow, well, you know, I want to do that again. <laughs> right. So and- can we go back to where you, um, you know, you're such a big influence for all of us, really, but um, especially for young people who, are, you know, may be struggling. And you started when you were 10. Now you're 17, almost 18. Um, and the struggles that kids go through now, when do you think that you either found your voice through an experience or something you witnessed? Um, I have to say that the, the moment I found my voice, and I think as a chef, it's very important that you find your voice because you're, you're going to be part of a team in some aspect or another. It's just inevitable. Cooking for people is complex, it's hard, it's challenging, and you need multiple people to get it done. So I, I think I found it last summer, um, which I know is a little late, but as a chef, it really takes a while to find your voice as a, as a real leader. Because I was in this food festival and there, there was this option about cooking this, this protein. And I remember thinking to myself, like, I don't like this cut of meat. This is not the right meat. It's not the right meat. So there's a plane. It's an airplane. <laughs> and um, this, this isn't the right cut of meat. And I, and I got to tell them. And I can't, I can't be shy about it. I can't be shy that this is not, it's not the right meat. I, I need this other one to make my dish work. And that kind of bravery and that kind of feeling where you know that you have to do it. You know that you have to say, like, I need my plant of fry. I, I, I got to do it. This is how it has to be. And that kind of voice and that kind of, you know, when you, when you say it and you're like, it's got to be like this. And you, you command and, and you really take ownership of the voice that you have and, and that you are the, the creative vision and that you're the leader and that it has to be perfect for you. That was a real, real growth moment for me because – before then, I might have said, well, you know, it's okay. I'm, I'll make it work. Or, mm-hmm. you know, all right, I guess it'll be fine if we if we serve the plant another way. Or if right. we served it, you know, loose and, and we don't worry about frying it. So but, I feel like even though you're talking about cooking, that applies to anyone in life, you know. Yeah. To and stand when you find up. that, you have to be the driving factor for yourself. And you have to know that, is this choice gonna gonna really haunt you for a while like if i hadn't said you know i gotta have this meat sorry or, <laughs> know, you're very passionate about it i get yeah, it you know as a chef you're very passionate about your food and it's got to be perfect and it's got to be the best because this is a represent- representation of you you're putting yourself on the plate you're putting your heart your passion your your skill your creativity there's a lot on the line there and you have to make sure that's how you want and even if you're not doing it, if you're doing something else creative, like you're writing or you're painting, 
as long as you're happy with it, that's what matters. And as long as it's your voice coming through, that's also what matters. Like, you can hear somebody say to you, well, you know, maybe you shouldn't kill off that character. You'd be like, yeah, yeah, well, whatever. Or maybe you go, all right, all right, I'm going to rewrite it. But in the end, you have to be comfortable with your own voice to the point where you can say, well, yes, I'm doing that. This is why. This is why what I want it to feel. And I'm going to do it. And that's great at such a young age, because I think even adults kind of struggle with that. Um, so we really do appreciate that you're joining us with Be The Voice and doing some videos for our program this fall. Um, I know that you also do a great job of giving back. I see you volunteering at soup kitchens. You've um, volunteered with Mid-South Food Bank, trying to collect donations, and you show up when people need you to be their face or their voice. Um, how important is that for you? And how important is it for young people to also do that? You know, for me, giving back is a very, very big cornerstone of, of kind of who I am. You know, um, some of my most inspirational moments that I look back on come from those kind of giving back moments. Like um, there's a time that I was working in the soup kitchen and uh, I was a little kid and this guy came in and he, he was late. He missed he missed the food and they had stopped serving. And, and the head guy, uh, Mr. Gallon, he said to me, you know, um, whip him up something. So I, I whipped him up this, this cheese and pepperoni sandwich. And uh, I, I served it to him and I said, you know, well, you missed the, you missed the big meal, but you know, we're, we, we still want to take care of you and we still have something for you. And he's, he's, he's like, Oh man, thank you so much. And then um, John said something about how I met president Obama and, and the guy was like, Oh my God, <laughs> you met president Obama he shakes his hand. Last same hand made my food. Oh my God. Oh. And you can just see just how you can inspire someone and how you can make a big difference in their life. And, and you can really turn their whole day around from like the guy being bummed out that he had, he had missed the meal to, you know, suddenly having this real heart to heart moment with them. It's just something that I'll never really forget. And even if not every moment when you're giving back is like that, you know, there's sometimes when you're just doing it, you're doing it and there, there's no inspiring moment that's going to come along, but you know that you're making a difference and you know that you're, you're volunteering and you're, you're self and your voice can really help them. Wow. And, you know, I just try and do it with all of them. There's not, I try not to turn down very many opportunities to get back. You know, if somebody needs help, I try to be there to help them. And, you know, if it's, you know, clearing out the uh, Overton Park and helping to take out invasive species, you know, I'm, I'm there for that. Or if it's, you know, doing real men wear pink for your, wear pink for the whole month. You know, I, I did that too, to raise awareness about breast cancer and things like that. You know, it just doesn't matter as long as you're doing something and you're doing it with your heart, you're gonna make a difference. Wow, your, your parents raised you right, honey. So um, please let them know that, that I said that. Um, so for kids who want to start, I, you know, I think it is overwhelming because there are a lot of, you know, opportunities and your parents are saying you need to do this and you need, need to do that. So for kids who want to start, what would you say to them? I think you got to start by looking at your heart. You got to see what really motivates you. Like what is the cause that you want to work for? Like for me, I started the food kitchen or yeah, the, the soup kitchen, sorry. Uh, because I wanted to feed people and I'm not around food and I like cooking and I like that. And so that's kind of what gravitated me first. But, you know, if you really care about like cats and dogs, then find a cat and dog rescue. If you really care about, you know, um, climate change and things like that, find an organization, get active, you know, use your voice and figure out what really matters to you. You know, if you're not, if it doesn't really matter to you, then you're not really going to do your best job. And I don't think that you should do anything halfway. So as long as you find something that really resonates with you and what you believe in and what you care about, then you'll be sure to make a difference. Well, I'm looking at some of the comments. Miss Selena with uh, Little Helpers is um, saying way to go. I know that you've helped Little Helpers in Memphis as well with some things. Um, and then Michelle Thomas is asking, what was your most challenging dish? All right, well, one of the dishes that I don't bring up very often um, uh, that you know, it's kind of an interesting one because what I do 
is I take um I take like a piece of salmon and then like a piece of halibut and I layer them together in a sous vide bag and I sous vide them together into one kind of fish steak and and it's a very challenging dish because you have two different fishes cooking in the sous vide at the same time turning into like one fillet and it was kind of one of those ideas that I had that I was like you know that'd be really cool if I could have salmon and halibut in the same dish that'd be pretty cool so that one was pretty challenging I'd say like my lobster cannolis a challenging dish because you have to make the cannoli shell by hand um, with a special recipe um, which is very laborious to say the least you know you take a lot of steps you can make the dough make it again let it rest take it out do this then you gotta fry it and then you have to make a lobster roll filling and then you have to make the powdered butter so that's that's another pretty challenging dish you know the ravioli with the egg in it that's a pretty tough one Wow. Yeah, I made vodka sauce a couple of weeks ago, and I, I thought that was a big deal. <laughs> well, you're talking about all this amazing stuff. So what's next for you? You just graduated. I know that um, COVID-19 has grounded all of us. I know that you had some trips planned and some big appearances all over the world. Um, so what's next for you? You know, I'm thinking about going to college, you know. Um, I'm debating whether or not I kind of want to take a gap year. Um, whether or not I want to try and focus on my business a lot during that time or if I want to, what I'm going to be able to do. You know, it's really, really an uncertain time to try and make a big life decision like, you know, where I'm, where I'm going to school, what I'm going to do, and if I'm ready to go to school and what school is going to look like. So that's pretty challenging. But I know that I'm going to keep cooking. Um, you know, you, you can take the chef out of the cooking, but you can't take the chef out of me. And I think that that's something that's, that's kind of always going to be there. I'm always going to like taste the food and be like, well, you know, the sauce, it, it, it doesn't go. Or be like, well, you know, they really overcooked this. Or, you know, this is really a cheap way of doing this. They're sous vide it with 12 sprays of thyme in it. And um, I know this, the, that's actually a pretty funny story. So I, I went to this restaurant, right? And I ate this braised beef, right? And, and I told, we were talking with the guy and, and he was like, oh, well, what would you have? And I said, the praise beef. And he was like, oh, yeah, how'd you like it? And I was like, oh, yeah, it was really good. It was sous vide. And he says, oh, yeah, and around this corner, we have the sous vide room. And I was like, yeah. And he was like, well, you know, let's play a little game. How many how many sprigs of thyme do you think are in there? Because mine, my, I said, well, you know, there's there's 12. And the guy was like, no, there's there's five. I, I tell my chefs to put five sprigs in there. And so then then we consult the bag, the sous vide bag. And he, and he has the beef on the one side, and then he flips it over. And then we count the sprigs, and there's exactly 12 sprigs in there. Oh, <laughs> and the died. It, it's, it's, it was so funny because he was like, oh, oh. And, <laughs> and he kind of got a little, a little flustered, a little messed up. He was like, well, I don't know. Around here, we have to uh, And he was really, he really got kind of upset about it. Oh, I love it. But I yeah. remember it as a really funny story. Uh, I don't think I can ever. What's that? So I'm going to end with our tagline is be the voice. So I'd like for you to finish be the voice and. Be the voice and make a difference. And I think you definitely have. Thank you so much for joining us and thank you for being a part of the program. And honestly, thank you for being a part of my life. Like I have to just keep reminding people I've known this young man since he was a baby. And so. <laughs> Um, and now he's about to turn 18. We're so proud of you. Thank you again. All right. Thank you so much for having me. Bye. Bye.